What's going on, guys? On June 26, that whole week, we're going to do something really, really different with the Corporate Citizen Playbook. We're going to be having live webinars because we're going to run our first corporate sprint. Now, what's the corporate sprint? It's about you actually starting and establishing your LLC, about the things that you need to do. So what I'm probably going to do is have three or maybe four nights where I'll be live, where you can ask questions so we can go ahead and work on getting your corporations up, started, and getting that whole process going. So if you want to be part of that, I have a webinar tomorrow at 5 p.m. Be there. And then we can go ahead and get you established and integrated and enrolled into the Corporate Citizen Playbook so you can start learning how to be a corporate citizen. The access to webinar is going to be in the link below, probably the first comment. So with that, let's roll off into this video. You know, I was at the gym today and the gym was crowded. I actually did not work out last week, so I worked out Friday and Saturday. And the gym, I have never seen it that crowded. And it was like, man, you know, went ahead and did my workout, took a little longer because I had to wait on some stuff. But I began to think, and I'm going somewhere with this. Why is the gym crowded on the weekend? And I, I went through this whole process. There is crowded because this is when people are off. And this is why they can do stuff because there was a fitness class that was packed. There was a bunch of people working out this morning. And it, this, this whole thing came to me when I was in the gym. Why are people scared to start a business? Because this is one of the things. I've had this YouTube channel going on 15 years, and I've been talking about, in some shape, fashion, or form, how to make more money, how to start a business to <clears throat> make more money, how to start a business to be financially secure. And consistently, I get a bunch of men, nine times out of 10, it's rarely a woman, it's rarely a woman, it's usually men who will say something like, Glendon, everybody ain't trying to get rich. If you live a humble life, and I'm just sitting here like, what is it with this generation of men who are scared to go out and to be something and to set yourself up on a higher level of success. Because this is one of the reasons that we're getting ready to do the corporate sprint. I have people who spent $5,000 on the corporate toolbox and they hadn't started the LLC yet. They haven't. So one of the things we're going to do is uh, not this week, because one of the things I had to learn is I have to give you time to get ready to reserve a date on your calendar. And this is why June 26, we're going to have a multitude of live webinars, probably seven or eight o'clock at night where you can ask me questions about setting up your LLC, setting up your web, your, your, your business. Cause one of the things is I see so much fear. I see, I mean, you know, cause like the thing with the gym that, that really got to me because normally I go to the gym nine 30 and Typically, it's just nowhere is, I would say the gym was eight times more crowded today than it is when I normally go. Because I normally go Monday, Tuesday, um, Wednesday, and Thursday, and Friday. And next week, I'm going to go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I'm not going to work out next weekend. <laughs> I'm, I don't want to go through that again. And it, that, that's something else that got me. I have been able to work out whenever I wanted to work out. At one point I was working out in the evenings 
And, you know, since I'm in this spot, that's one of the first things I do. Then I come home and work. And I, I really, really sit down and I think and I have a try to have a deeper understanding of why so many people are scared. I'm not saying once again, let me go ahead and be 100 percent clear. There's a group of people out there who are doing research. There are a group of people out there who are studying. And when they get to a certain level, they'll take action and start their business. I'm not talking to you guys. Let me tell you who I'm talking to. I'm talking to you guys who've been watching me for years. Years. And you have not started a business in years. In this morning's video, once again, you know what type of woman you like, but Glenn, and this is something I consistently get. Glenn, I want to start a business, but I don't know what to do. Uh, actually, I don't think that you really want to start a business. No, because that would be saying, hey, I really want to date this woman, but I don't know how to get to know her. I don't know how to talk to her. I don't know how to ask her. I don't know how to start a relationship. That is a group of guys. That is a group of guys. But what I feel is you are scared of success. And this is one of the reasons, and I, I will say, that I got so much hate in the past. Um, going forward, the hate that I, that I'm not getting the hate that I used to get. I mean, it was crazy people making up, you know, doing all kinds of foolish things, right? So here I was, a man, talking about the things that I did in my personal life, talking about the things I did in my business life. And see, that wasn't the whole situation. The problem was for years, I was providing receipts. I was showing you car titles. I was showing you bank statements. I was showing you pay stubs. I was showing you screenshots of my Stripe account. And that's where the hate began. Because not only was I just on the internet saying, hey, I'm doing this, I was backing it up with proof. And that's where I believe the intersection of the hate, because essentially I'm a regular dude that has done some extraordinary stuff. You may not like me. That's fine. But can you deny that I wrote books? Oh, no. You can go to Amazon and put Glendon Cameron in books and books. The books start rolling across your screen. Glendon Cameron. Books, right, author, uh, Glendon Cameron, business owner, Glendon Cameron, YouTuber. You know, you may not like me, but you cannot deny my success. And that's where the intersection of the hate comes in. And I'm, I'm about to say something. I'm about to say something very, very real. The person that you see looking at you in the mirror in the morning is a complete punk, is a complete wimp. Now, why do I say that? And once again, I am talking to the people who are scared, terrified to start a business. Because the more I thought about this, the more I got into it, because, um, you know, if I was a athlete, an NBA player, or an NFL player, and I was coming up here on TikTok and showing you receipts, that wouldn't have been bad. Because it's like, oh, he's an athlete. He makes millions of dollars. But for me to be a business person living like an athlete, living like a rapper, living like a movie star, that's too much. That's that, 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 no, 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 no. That's too much. You ain't supposed to be living like that, man. I remember 
And this was a woman. When I was buying the cars for the car rental business, and I was paying cash for the cars, and I bought 31 cars paid cash, I didn't realize what that did to the group of desperate punks and wimps. Because, see, it's one thing to come on the internet and say, I'm doing this and doing this, but it's a whole nother thing to provide proof. And that's where the problems begin. Because, you know, I look back on my YouTube career and every time that I started to generate a lot of hate, it was because I was showing proof. It wasn't because I was saying the things I was saying. You could say whatever you want to say. You could, you could, you could teach people how to do criminal fraud stuff. And they'll like, well, man, keep the videos coming. Keep the videos coming. But when you are an honest businessman showing proof of your work, proof of concept, this is where, once again, I'm not talking to the nerd tribe. I'm not talking to the hardworking people. I'm talking to the punks and the wimps who are terrified, who are scared to start a business because that means you will have to change. And that's the problem. That's the big, big problem. You will have to change. You would have to stop being the sorry punk wimp that you are today. And I say this. You know, because I have many people who come at, who, who really, they don't really come at me. They just disagree with me. That's what I'll say. They, they'll disagree with me. And they'll say the most outlandish things like the majority of people who are remote workers are project managers and programmers. That is not the majority of people who do remote work. You have customer service reps at home doing remote work. You have all types of people doing remote work. And then, once again, the passport bras. The majority of passport bras are computer people. Uh, no, that's, that's not true. Uh, I've seen many videos by passport bras, and there's nothing that indicates that this brother is even comfortable with the internal workings of a program or a computer. But once again, all of this is fear. Because see, here's the thing. I want you to fast forward. I want you to fast forward to you're 80 years old and then you're looking back over your life. Are you gonna be proud or are you gonna be disappointed? So, 2019, I had a heart attack. I was in the hospital. It took me seven months to recover. And you know what? I faced death. And you know, while I was recovering, not once did I sit back and say, I wish I hadn't did this. That didn't even enter my mind. You know why? Because I've written books. I've started businesses. I've been successful. So I don't have to know when I'm 80, I'm going to look back. I'm going to be really, really proud. But for you punks and wimps, you're going to be very, very disappointed. You're going to be really, really disappointed because I'm beginning to see something. I've had this YouTube channel for many, many years. And I've been talking about how to start a business, how to get money, how to get rich, how to start a business. Yet for some reason, and once again, your numbers are diminishing. A lot of you are like, hey, this guy's not putting out content. I want to see, so I'm going to leave. Good move. But there's a group of you who still hang around who are just scared of being a man. I'm about to talk some talk. You're scared of being a man. You're scared of paying all the bills. You're scared of being a provider. You're scared of being a father. You're scared of being a leader. 
I don't want to be a leader. I don't want to be a provider. I don't want to be the man. I don't want to pay all the bills. You are just so scared. I mean, it's, I understand a lot now. I understand a lot. I understand why there is so much animosity. Because when I say, once again, as a man, you should be a leader. Your life should be together so that when you meet a woman, she can enter your life and fit into a compartment because your life is already together. You don't need a woman to pay no rent. You don't need a woman to help you with the car bills. You don't need a woman to do all that stuff because you are a man and your life is in order. Y'all don't want no parts of that. You want no parts of starting a business. You want no parts of being the leader. You want no parts of being the protector. You want no parts of being a high paying taxpayer. No, 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 no. You want to completely be a punk and a wimp the rest of your life because you don't want to be respectable. You don't want to start nothing. You don't want to do nothing. You don't want to build nothing. All you want to do, and this is one of the things, and this is one of the reasons that I stopped the male content. I had so many men who wanted to sign up to go ahead and finesse a woman in some regards and have nothing to do with starting the business, nothing to do about being the protector or provider, being the father. No, I, no, I don't want none of that. I don't want none of that. I just want to be a perpetual boy. I don't want to be a man. No, 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 I don't, no, no, I don't want any of that. Because essentially, one of the things I have seen, and other people have spoken about this, that the average person doesn't want to do anything. Uh, there's another YouTube channel that put out a video talking about why they need you to come back to the work. And it was all about jealousy and managers and all this other stuff. And this was put down by a YouTuber who's never been a boss, who's never had to make sure that payroll was correct. Because I've said this, and they have empirical proof that the people who are working from home are not working as hard as they were when they're working in the office. And this is why all of these CEOs and all of these people are like, you gotta come back to the office, you gotta come back to the office. And the remote workforces, no, we don't want to go back to the office. We like working from home. I know a girl who makes $160,000 a year. And she cannot say that she's not getting paid well. She is getting paid well. And she at 160 K a year, is not working as hard as she was working in the office. She ain't working as hard. So you cannot tell me that people who are making 35, 40 and $50,000 a year working from home are really there. There's a group of people who have signed a contract and they will go home and they will set up a home office and they will work and do the things that they need to do for the company. There's a smaller group of people, but the majority, uh-uh, nah. And you know, I, I saw all kinds of stuff in the comments in that video and you completely missed the point. The video was the remote at work at home force is the reason that most Americans will not be rich because you don't want to work. <laughs> That's the issue. You've been given the license to work at home and you still will not do the things you need to do. That's why you will never be rich. That's why you will never have the kind of money. That's why when you go to the bank and you want to pull out 10,000 cash, you can't do it. Cause you don't want to do the work and you sit. And this is one of the things, and this, this is another thing that got me. Uh, it's Daniel Mack. Hey, cool car. You got there. What do you do for a living? And I have been trying to figure out why 
a man going up to someone in a nice car asking them what they do for a living puts money in the disadvantaged people's pockets because it doesn't. And then I figured it out. There's this new thing called silent wealth. And it's about how these rich people are not wearing designer labels. And cause see there, there's two group of people in the world. There are the producers and there are the consumers and the producer quadrant is kind of tiny, right? But the consumer quadrant, Daniel Mack going up to someone in a nice car and saying, hey, what do you do for a living? And someone getting exciting, excited and liking these videos. These are consumers. Because once again, as soon as I saw it, I'm like, this is this is my thinking. When I first saw Daniel Mack and I was like, I'm not going to watch this. And I really don't pay him any attention. I'm going to go out and buy my own Porsche. I'm not gonna watch a kid running up to people who are driving Bentleys, Porsches, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, and asking questions. I'm gonna do the things I need to do in my life where I can go out and buy my own Porsche. Producer, not a consumer. Producer. And once I started to really, really think about that, because you know, like The Real Housewives of Atlanta, one of the stupidest shows to ever be on television. I paid it no attention. Why? Because I'm over here in the producer corner. I'm not a consumer. If there's something I want in life, I will go out and get it. I will not sit and be a fanboy of people who drive nice cars. I will not sit, I will not go to the shows. I will set myself up where I can actually go out and buy my own nice car. And that is where the scared man gets even more scared. The scared man gets even more terrified because here's the thing, and I'm gonna tell you something. You are scared because if you try, you know you're going to fail. And I'm going to say something. You're 100 percent correct. You're 100 percent correct. You're 100 percent correct. My first five businesses all failed because I didn't know what I was doing. You're 100 percent correct that you will start a business and fail. But this is where you missed the point. In each one of those failed businesses, I learned things I didn't know. And to this day, some of the things that I learned from those five failed businesses are the reason that I have a successful business today. Y'all don't get it. It's like you're so scared to be a man, so scared to be a producer, so scared to be someone. And I can tell you as a man who looked deaf in the eye I wasn't scared. I wasn't like, well, I regret that I didn't do this. I re no, because more than likely, I I'll tell you something. When people ask you, what are your dreams? Currently at the moment, I don't really have any dreams. Pretty much everything that I have dreamt as a child, every I've accomplished. I got to sit down and plan out some new dreams because I don't have a, I don't, I got a Porsche. I live in the high rise. I don't have no dreams. I'm living the life I want to live. See, and I honestly, if I was younger, because this is something else too, I'm going to tell you, when you get older, the urge to be living in a hotel ain't that cool. Like if I take three, three trips a year, I'm good. And this is one of the things you will find out with people who get old. As older you get, the less things you do. But yeah, looking at the producer and the consumer quadrant and most of the country is over here in this consumer quadrant where they want to fantasize. This is one of the craziest things I thought girl did the video. Uh, Sophia Richie got married 
And, you know, because Sophia Richie was practicing quiet wealth, this is the reason she bagged a billionaire son. And I'm like, Sophia Richie? The daughter of Lionel Richie? Wasn't she already rich? Yeah, she was already rich. She did not change her appearance to go ahead and somehow. But once again, this is the fantasy. And there's a lot of videos on TikTok about this, that women, once again, women think that if they can adapt certain mannerisms, that they can somehow snag a billionaire or a man who's rich. <laughs> Sophia Richie was already rich. Think Lionel Richie is worth 400 million. Lionel Richie is in his 70s, which means most of his time with us has passed. Maybe Lionel will make it to 80. Maybe Lionel will make it to 90. I don't know. But I do know this, that Sophia Richie going to get that Lionel Richie money. She already rich. And once again, pursue, pr uh, producer, consumer. And this is one of the things that I've consistently seen, that people in the consumer class will figure out all types of stuff to get close to rich manipulation, tricks, and all kinds of stuff. And I'm just sitting here like, this is crazy. But once again, I'm over here in the producer quadrant. I will make, I will create, I will produce. I produce more than I consume. And this is one of the things for you men, you don't want to be a producer. You don't want to create anything. You don't want to do it. You, you, you don't want anything to do with that. And this is why your life is going to continue to be miserable. This is why you're going to be freaking out at the end of the month when it's time to pay rent, when it's time to pay bills, and you're going to start counting your pennies because they're going to be short and you'll just come up with enough money to pay your rent, to pay your mortgage. And you, then you go to your bank account and your bank account's big old, big old E, big old E, empty. Because you don't want to do nothing. Because you don't want to build nothing. You don't want to create nothing. And you will continue to be miserable. You will continue to be that shell of a man. Because you don't want to do nothing. And I know many people are going to come back at me. Well, you know, the average American ain't late. The average American is lazy as hell. The average American is lazy as lazy, lazy, lazy. Proof? Look what happened with remote work. These men, you run these companies, they have computer software, they have analyzers. They know for a fact these people weren't working at home the way that they worked in the office. They know this for a fact. They know this for a fact. So if you want to move over to the producer class, because over, over here in the producer class, the air is a lot easier to breathe. Because see, like me going to that gym in the morning, I was like, I walked to the gym and I saw all those people. I was like, good Lord, what's going on? Because see, I get to go to the gym when there are not a lot of people there because they all at work. They at work. But on the weekends, they're off. They're off. Get it? So if you want to move over to the producer class, start a business, start working really, really hard, and get your life together, be at the webinar tomorrow because we're getting ready to break free with a different level of intrigue. But yeah, the scared men, they're just scared, man, just scared. So the link for the webinar will be below. Hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at 5 p.m. My name is Glendon Cameron. I will see you guys in the next video.